Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing Brunstrom's Stages of Recovery. Brunstrom's Stages of Recovery is a series of six or seven stages that describe the progress of a patient uh, through their journey of stroke recovery. Okay, so post CVA, cerebrovascular accident. And it does it in terms of spasticity and voluntary movement. And so the stages look like this. The person will start with normal motor function. This is before the stroke. They're just going about their day, doing normal things, right? And then they have that CVA, cerebrovascular accident, the stroke. Blood flow gets cut off perhaps to one part of the brain, and that part of the brain starves, and you get an infarct. Okay? Once that happens, uh, they're going to progress into stage one here, which is initially flaccid paralysis of the associated limbs that correspond to that part of the brain that got the infarct. Okay? And you'll start at stage one, and you'll just progress through these stages. Now, this table up here shows six stages. I'll jump ahead a little bit. Stage six is return to near normal motor control. Stage 7 is not shown over here in the table, but it's basically when there's complete restoration of normal motor function and there's no spasticity, down here in green. Normal motor function completely returns, no spasticity, and it should be more or less how they were before the stroke. Not everybody gets to stage 7, okay? Not everybody gets there, which is probably why it's not included in this table, but it would be complete restoration of normal motor function. So let's now take a journey through these stages of recovery from a stroke. And here is a graph right here that represents the degree of spasticity as we move through. This vertical axis is the amount of spasticity. The higher the curve is, the more spasticity there is. And this x-axis is really just a progression of time through the recovery. This dotted line right here represents normal motor function. That's what we're trying to get back to. Above the line is spasticity, or spastic paralysis. Below the line is flaccid paralysis, or flaccidity. Okay? So initially we start right here, really below normal motor function, really in that flaccid paralysis. That's stage one. Very quickly, though, we start to develop spasticity. Once spasticity begins to develop, that gets you to stage two. This is where we see the emergence of spasticity. And what we typically see here are poorly controlled movements within a given synergy pattern. So the most common one you'll see in the upper extremity that you'll see right here in the picture is a flexion synergy. That's what you see here. And when the spasticity starts to emerge, in stage two the person might have poorly controlled movements, but they're within that synergy. So maybe we're about right here. Now, through stage two, that spasticity is going to increase a lot. Up to stage three, where we see a peak in spasticity. Each of these red circles right here represents how much spasticity we have. We've got a lot here in stage three. This is where it peaks. So let's consider for a moment a patient that has a flexion synergy of the upper extremity. Okay? Would they be able to do elbow flexion fairly well? Yes. Elbow flexion is within the flexion synergy. Right? So they should have voluntary and pretty good control of elbow flexion because it's within the synergy. But in stage three, would they be able to do elbow extension? No. They would probably not be able to do hardly any elbow extension because that's outside of the flexion synergy. Okay? What you should also notice is that in stage two, the movements, they're poorly controlled, and they tend to be kind of isolated, single joint movements, but they're poorly controlled. In stage three, we begin to see those movements across multiple joints, but they're still within that synergy. Now in stage four, we get over that peak and we're starting to see a little bit less spasticity. And in stage four, we're still going to have voluntary, pretty well-controlled movements, but we're going to start seeing them occur outside of that synergy. Okay? So in stage three, that person would probably not be able to perform elbow extension because it's outside of the flexion synergy. Once we get to stage four and that spasticity starts to calm down a little bit, 
they might actually be able to form a little bit of elbow extension. It might not have very good control, but there might be a little bit of it. Okay. In stage five, the spasticity is decreased even more, and the person would be expected to have better control of isolated movements at single joints inside and outside of their synergy. Now, stage six is the last one in this table. This is where the person is going to return to near normal motor control. Um, you should see a full spectrum of movements that return. Okay? So this person who originally had a flexion synergy, they'll probably be able to do elbow extension pretty well. Okay? They may not be able to lift a lot of weight with it. They'll probably be able to do active range of motion, though, very well. And that's because even though we start with a little bit of spasticity in stage six, it's going to disappear by the end of stage six. Okay, so full spectrum of movements return. Person should be able to do active range of motion in this stage. Now stage seven is not shown here in the table, but it should involve complete restoration of normal function and there shouldn't be any spasticity. By the end of stage six, there should also be no spasticity, so we wouldn't expect any in stage seven, but complete restoration of normal motor function. They should appear very similar to how they were before the stroke, before the infarct of the brain. So whereas by the end of stage six, they should be fairly competent with active range of motion in and outside of their former synergy, but in stage seven, they'd probably be able to do more resisted motion, not just active range of motion, but it should be resisted, very similar to how they were before the cerebral infarct. Let's now look at an actual NPTE practice question. A physical therapist evaluates a patient two weeks status post CVA with resultant left hemiplegia. The therapist notes that the patient has marked spasticity and is unable to perform movement outside the flexor synergy pattern. However, the patient is able to perform voluntary movements within the synergy pattern. What stage of Brunstrom's recovery does the scenario most accurately describe? Okay, Probably two of the most important ones to have memorized here are going to be stages three and four. If you had to memorize any two of these, these would be the two to memorize because even if you forget all the others, you can kind of deduce stages five and six and one and two if you at least know three and four. And the reason you want to memorize those is stage three is where they've got voluntary, well-controlled movements in the synergy. And then in stage four, they've got voluntary, well-controlled movements outside the synergy. Okay, so between stages three and four, that's where we kind of make that transition to within and outside the synergy. Okay, so what's the key information here in the question? Well, I've got it here in red. One is they're unable to perform movement outside the flexor synergy pattern. Okay, Exactly which synergy they have is not really relevant here. The point is they're unable to perform movement outside of it. So can they be stage four? No. They also can't be stage five, they can't be stage six, and they can't be stage seven. Right. So we've automatically eliminated stages four and five. Now we're down to stages two and three, at that point, we have a 50% chance of getting it right. The other key piece of information here is that they're able to perform voluntary movements within the synergy pattern. You look up at this table, technically there are movements uh, in the synergy pattern for stages two and three. The key word here, though, is voluntary. And when I think of voluntary, I'm thinking of fairly well-controlled movements. Um, in stage two, it's not fairly well controlled and it probably isn't so much voluntary. Okay, so the fact that it's a voluntary movement within the synergy pattern, that tells me that the answer here is stage three. Okay, and again, most of these questions on Brunstrom's stages of recovery, you can pretty much deduce by knowing stages three and four. Okay, if you know these two, you've got a pretty good chance of getting the question right even if you don't know exactly the other four stages, one and two and five and six. So memorize three and four. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of Brunstrom's stages of recovery. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.